Order up. There's a hospital in Germany that's offering a variety of meals to its staff at all hours, though there are some when not a single human's working in the kitchen. That's because it's a robotic kitchen. Each day, people fill a special refrigerator with a bunch of prepared ingredients. Then, the robotic kitchen workers can leave while the robot arm can season, heat, fry, or do whatever is needed to prepare meals. The company that makes it says it can produce everything from stir fry and ramen to pasta, meatballs, and chicken fricassee, and all in a matter of minutes. The cost of each meal is anywhere from six and a half to ten dollars. The cost of the kitchen itself? That wasn't published, though similar contraptions from other companies can go for several hundred thousand dollars, plus whatever it takes to refill them with ingredients, repair them, and or maintain them. This kitchen's maker says it's still cheaper for owners than employing human cooks. And that brings us to another downside. It could take people's jobs, though the German hospital that uses it says finding cooks to work the odd hours that medical staff do can be a challenge in itself. The robot kitchen's been operating here for about five months. Hi, I'm Carl Azus for The World From A To Z, an independently produced, nonpartisan news show, and we're so thankful to have you watching this Thursday. October 17th marks exactly three weeks since the Category 4 Hurricane Helene made landfall in Florida's Big Bend region and then moved like a buzzsaw through the southeast, devastating communities in six states. The last time an Atlantic storm was this deadly in America was when Hurricane Katrina hit in 2005. So far, Helene's been blamed for more than 230 deaths, almost half of them in North Carolina, which had seen days of flooding rain before the hurricane struck. The total number of lives lost could be larger, though, because the state's governor says at least 92 people are still missing. Thousands of homes were damaged in the region. Businesses were flooded. Officials expect there will be a long road to recovery. But running water has been restored in many areas, though residents have been told to boil it. Tens of thousands are still without power, but it's gradually coming back. First responders have reached a lot of the places that were cut off when roads were washed out. And there have been numerous accounts of neighbors helping neighbors, communities coming together to assist those in need. On tomorrow's show, we're planning an update on the effects of Hurricane Milton. Upward and out. Dutch scientist Antoni van Leeuwenhoek was the first researcher to observe what amoebas, bacteria, cells, DNA. Peering through his microscope in the late 1600s, this man became known as the father of microbiology for his research on bacteria. They're damp and warm and perfect environments for microbes. You may not want to think about the viruses that live on shower heads and toothbrushes, but researchers did it for you. It's unsurprising that we find them there because we find a bunch of bacteria basically everywhere, everywhere. Um, but what was surprising is how many different viruses we found and how different they looked from anything that we had ever seen before. Microbiologist Erica Hartman led a study which found something called bacteriophage all over these two environments. While that sounds bad, she says these are not viruses that make you sick. Instead, they infect bacteria and these could potentially be used to save lives. For a long time, we've relied on antibiotics to be able to treat infections and save lives. But right now, antimicrobial resistance is one of the biggest public health challenges that we're facing globally. And so there's a lot of hope that we can leverage things like bacteriophage to help treat these infections that we can no longer treat with antibiotic drugs. Hartman says the hope is that these phages or something learned from them will aid in the development of better drugs or improved biotechnologies. We need microbes to, in our gut, help us digest our food, on our skin, help us to ward off pathogens. And it's actually a really good thing that we are exposed to microbes from time to time. I'm Mandy Gaither. On this date in world history, the 
first time a tornado was ever recorded in England was when one struck on October 17th, 1091. Experts estimate its wind speeds were more than 207 miles per hour, which would have carried devastating intensity. The twister destroyed churches, hundreds of homes, and possibly damaged the London Bridge, though historians don't all agree on that. Two lives were lost according to different accounts, which is considered minimal in the overall scope of the damage. On this date in 1907, a wireless communication service connected across the Atlantic. Giulielmo Marconi's invention reached from Nova Scotia, Canada to Clifton, Ireland. It gave people another tool, besides undersea cables, to communicate overseas. And this was the date in 1979 when the Catholic nun known as Mother Teresa won the Nobel Peace Prize. The woman whose tireless efforts to assist the poor in India was awarded, quote, for her work for bringing help to suffering humanity. Hey! Did you know in the 2008 election, Barack Obama was the first candidate to use social media in a campaign? If you like infographics and presidential history, check out We the People and the President. Where in the world? This is a country that achieved its independence from Britain in 1980. It's located in Southern Africa between South Africa and Zambia. It's a presidential republic whose capital is Harare. This is Zimbabwe, a nation of more than 17 million people. This is a common sight in Zimbabwe, a country in Southern Africa, home to 100,000 elephants. Zimbabwe has the second largest elephant population in the world, and more than half of those live here, showing National Park. It's a natural reserve, just a few miles from where these students live and go to school. So people and creatures cross paths often. Elephants have killed people several times and destroyed the fields. Even if you are herding cattle, if you meet the elephants, you will be attacked. Wild animals killed 50 people and injured 85 more in Zimbabwe last year. That number may seem small, but villagers say it doesn't take into consideration the number of children chased or threatened by wild animals every year. Animals always stray out of the park. Elephants, lions, and all the time we have to escort our kids to school because it's a walk more than five kilometers. But three miles on two wheels, that's a game changer for these students and their families. Dozens of school children in western Zimbabwe have been given bicycles thanks to a joint initiative between the Zimbabwean National Parks Authority and the International Fund for Animal Welfare. Before the new bicycles, students would have to leave before dawn when animals are most active to get to school on time. Now they can leave later and arrive sooner. The program also aims to reduce the time children are on foot during their journeys to and from school thereby reducing the risk of wild animal attacks and promoting human-wildlife harmony. The Gopher State, the Loon State, and the North Star State are three alternative nicknames for the same place. It's Minnesota, and it's where Mr. Seabin's class is watching. Great to see the Huskies of Albany Area High School in the city of Albany. There's a town named Jones in the Sooner State of Oklahoma, and Miss Eli's class is watching there. We're excited to graze with the Longhorns of Jones Middle School. And maybe there was a time to get out of Dodge, but we're jumping right back in to join Mr. Mawarder's class. Dodge City High School is in Dodge City, Kansas, the natural state. Slim fit, classic fit, canvas, peak lapel, tuxedo. There are many different suits out there to choose from, but for someone who'd choose something way out there like space, here's the newest style for NASA's next moon mission. It was designed by Italian fashion brand Prada and the American company Axiom Space, which received a $228 million contract from NASA to build the suit. Some critics have questioned the use of a luxury brand in a design funded by tax dollars. But if you're shooting for the moon on looking out of sight or at least out of this world, some might feel the arma need to heel figure on a higher Lacoste than her may make prod astronauts look like a boss when Step and Lauren to offend design that gets a boot ton of looks when they open the Dior and see if the moon is really made of Gucci. I'm Carl Izzers and my style is punch, y'all. This is out of the world from A to Z and you mean the world to me.